Hello and welcome to this Control Web Panel tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install and use PostgreSQL in both the CWP Admin Panel and User Panel. CWP makes installing PostgreSQL easy. Just log into your CWP Admin Panel, and from the left-hand pane, go to SQL Services and open the submenu, and select PostgreSQL Manager. And this opens the PostgreSQL Database Manager. Currently, we see that PostgreSQL is not installed, but we can install now by selecting the drop down menu and choosing the version that we want to install. In this case, either version 11, 12, or 13, so we'll select 13 as the most recent version. And click Continue to confirm the installation. And in just a few seconds, PostgreSQL is installed. Here we see a database list with a list of all of our databases that we can sort by database name, user system owner, or users. On the right hand side, we have an information pane that shows the version of PostgreSQL that we have installed and its status, currently running. Here we have options to either stop PostgreSQL, which we can then restart by clicking this icon here or here. And if we've made changes and we just need to restart our PostgreSQL, we can click Restart PostgreSQL here. And that automatically starts and restarts PostgreSQL. To add a new database, Click Add New Database. Then we can select the user account, so we'll choose Tutorial, and then assign a name. And the database name will be set as username underscore DB name, and then save. And the database has been saved successfully and added to our table. If we have many tables, we can increase the table size up to 100 entries, and we can search our results by using the search field here. Under the new database that we just created, we have no associated users yet, but under Actions, we have an icon here to add a user to this database or delete this database. So let's go ahead and add a user. We'll click the icon here to add a user to this database, and we'll assign our username, and then assign a password. And here we can use the CWP Password Manager to automatically generate a random secure password. And if that's not secure enough for us, we can use the password settings here to either adjust the length of our password or the style. And we can choose from alphabetical, alphanumeric, or alphanumerics and symbols, which would be the most secure, and then generate a new password. Then we can use this icon here to copy the password to our clipboard and then paste it here to the confirm password field. Alternatively, if we want to add an existing user, we can just click add existing user and choose them from the drop down menu. Since we haven't added any users yet, this is currently blank. So we'll add a new user and save. And the user has been added to our table. Here within the table, we have convenient icons to either manage this user, which we can click to change their password or delete this user. We can also access our users by clicking the user tab here at the top. And this will show us a list of all of our users. And again, when we have many, we can increase our table to show up to 100 entries or use the search field to filter our results. Again, we can manage this user to change their password or delete the user. Under the configuration tab, we have the option to make PostgreSQL available in the user panel. So we'll check this to select it. Then we can set the option for availability to make it available for all accounts or per account. If we're using per account, then we can select the accounts that will have access to PostgreSQL and save our configuration. We also have the option to remove PostgreSQL by uninstalling it here, and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Under the settings, we have our various PostgreSQL settings, starting with the network settings, including listening address, and this specifies the TCP IP addresses on which the server is to listen for connections from client applications. The value takes the form of a comma separated list of host names and or numeric IP addresses. The special entry asterisk corresponds to all available IP interfaces. Currently, this is set at localhost. We can set the listening port, which is the TCP port the server listens on. 5432 is the default. Note that the same port number is used for all IP addresses the server listens on. The maximum number of connections determines the maximum number of concurrent connections to the database server. The default is set at 100. Then we have authentication settings, including the authentication timeout. This is the maximum amount of time allowed to complete client authentication. 
If a would-be client has not completed the authentication protocol in this much time, the server closes the connection. This prevents hung clients from occupying a connection indefinitely. If this value is specified without units, it is taken as seconds. The default is set for one minute. Then we have password encryption. This parameter defines the algorithm used to encrypt the user password. And you can choose from the drop-down menu either MD5 or SHA-256. Then we have our error reporting and logging settings, starting with Logging Collector. This parameter enables the Logging Collector, which is a background process that captures log messages sent to STDERR and redirects them into log files. This approach is often more useful than logging to syslog, since some types of messages might not appear in syslog output. One common example is dynamic linker failure messages. Another is error messages produced by scripts such as archive command. This is set to yes by default. Then we can set the log directory. When login collector is enabled, this parameter determines the directory in which log files will be created. It can be specified as an absolute path or relative to the cluster data directory. By default, it's set to log. Then we can set the log file name. When login collector is enabled, this parameter sets the file names of the created log files. The value is treated as an STRF time pattern so percent escapes can be used to specify time varying file names. Note that if there are any time zone dependent percent escapes, the computation is done in the zone specified by log time zone. The supported percent escapes are similar to those listed in the open groups STRF time specification. Note that the system's STRF time is not used directly, so platform specific non-standard extensions do not work. The default is PostgreSQL dash percent y dash percent m dash percent d underscore percent h percent m percent five percent s dot log. If you specify a file name without escapes, you should plan to use a log rotation utility to avoid eventually filling the entire disk. In releases prior to 8.4, if no percent escapes were present, PostgreSQL would append the epoch of the new log file's creation time, but this is no longer the case. By default, this is set to PostgreSQL percent a dot log. Then we can set the log messages level. This controls which message levels are written to the server log. Valid values are debug 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, info, notice, warning, error, log, fatal, and panic. Each level includes all the levels that follow it. The later the level, the fewer messages are sent to the log. By default, this is set to a mid-level value of warning. Next, we can set the minimum SQL statement log. This controls which SQL statements that cause an error condition are recorded in the server log. The current SQL statement is included in the log entry for any message of the specified severity or higher. Valid values are debug 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1, info, notice, warning, error, log, fatal, and panic. The default is error, which means statements causing errors, log messages, fatal errors, or panics will be logged. To effectively turn off logging of failing statements, set this parameter to panic. Then we have the minimum duration statement log. This causes the duration of each completed statement to be logged if the statement ran for at least the specified amount of time. For example, if you set it to 250 milliseconds, then all SQL statements that run 250 milliseconds or longer will be logged. Enabling this parameter can be helpful in tracking down unoptimized queries in your applications. If this value is specified without units, it is taken as milliseconds. Setting this to zero prints all statement durations. Minus one, the default, disables logging statement durations. Once you've made your changes, you can save your settings and then restart PostgreSQL here in the info pane, or just save and restart PostgreSQL in one move by clicking this button here. And that saves your changes. You also have access to an advanced editor here in the top right corner. And this opens the PostgreSQL advanced editor. Here you can make any changes directly to the configuration file. And when you're done, again, save your settings and restart PostgreSQL. Now that we've activated and configured PostgreSQL, we can log into our user panel. 
and go to the left hand pane and open the databases submenu. And here we'll find Postgre Manager. This opens a table that shows our list of databases, and we have no databases created so far. But here we can click the blue button to add a new database. We'll start by giving our new database a name, and the database name will be set as username underscore database name. And go ahead and save the new database. And the new database is added to our table here. When we have many databases added, we can increase our table to show up to 100 entries, and we can use the search field here to filter the results. Under our new database that we just created, we have no associated users yet, but under the actions column, we have an icon to add a user to this database, or we can delete the database. So let's go ahead and add a new user to this database. And here we'll give our username a name and then assign a password. And again, we can use the CWP password generator to assign a password. And if we're not happy with how secure that is, we can increase the length and security and generate a new password, copy that to our clipboard, and paste that in the confirm password field. If we have any existing users already created, we can add an existing user here. Because we have no existing users, we'll just add a new one. And save. And here we can see the new user has been added to our database table. In this table, we also have convenient icons to manage the user where we can change their password or we can delete the user. We can also access our users here under the Users tab, where we again have options to manage their password or delete the user. Let's go back to our CWP admin panel, and within the PostgreSQL Manager, we'll go to our Configuration tab. And let's remove PostgreSQL by clicking this Uninstall button. And click Continue to confirm the uninstallation, and PostgreSQL is completely uninstalled instantly. Now we can go back to our user panel and check our dashboard. And now when we open the databases submenu, we can see that PostgreSQL has been removed from our user panel. And that's how to install and configure PostgreSQL in the CWP admin and user panels. For more information, please refer to the following link. Thank you for using CWP.